Well, here's where I'm at with this radio now. Having replaced all these capacitors, tested the radio and found it to be not operating. I become suspicious about the tubes again. Now, I mentioned I tested them. And when I tested them, I noticed it's a very odd tube lineup. In fact, I don't think it's even a possible tube lineup. The uh, Forgetting the rectifier tube and the output tube, just concentrating on the three miniature tubes that are in here, there's a 6AT6 and then two BA6s. Now, this does not make sense because we need a multi-element tube in here to act as the mixer and oscillator too, usually, to combine. And uh, a 6BA6 doesn't do it. The 6AT6, um, that's commonly used as a detector. That's where the AVC voltage is generated and I think it comes with a, uh, maybe it's a triode in there as a first audio amp. So that's an appropriate tube. So first question, are these the right tubes in this radio? I don't have any documentation on it, so I'm just going by what I've been given. So the first question, are these the right tubes? Second question, are they in the right place? Are they plugged in the right spots? Or has somebody just grabbed some tubes, shoved them in, crossed their finger and hoped they would work? So we're going to start off by thinking or assuming the 6AT6, which by the way I've swapped for a 6AV6. Uh, which is uh, essentially uh, an equivalent tube with the same uh, pin pinout on it. Um, we'll assume that one's in the correct spot, and that would be here. So we will ignore this for a moment, and we'll concentrate on these two sockets and ponder where they are in the circuit here. So as I look at these, first thing I see is here's the RF section up here. You can tell from these coils position of the band switch, things like that. So just the likely layout is the first RF tube, if there is one, or more likely the mixer tube is the first tube that the signal is passed to from the antenna circuitry in the uh, front end. So let's see if we can figure that out. Which tube in here So I'm looking at connections between the, the tube sockets and up into this area here. And so I see a white wire go up into the switch from here. I see a bare wire going up into the switch from here. Well, that's a ground wire, that bare one. There's another one through this going up. So this is intimately connected to the switch. Now what about this guy here? He also has wires going up into the switch here, this green one. It's got a connection into the IF here. That's a low voltage side of the IF. So. One IF here, the other IF is over here. Holy oh, smokes, there's another short circuit there. Oh my gosh. Close, but not quite. Wow. That was...
within a hair width of being a short circuit there. But it was not. Okay. So I'll also see some... You know, this is the output tube here. If we were to identify the grid, looks like this is probably grid connection here. Let's check that. So that's a 6V6. Six V six beam power tube and the grid pin number five. Pin number five. One, two, three, four, five. Sure enough, that is the grid. So and this is where the six AT six is, which is the uh, detector and first audio amp. So that all makes sense. So this is definitely now, if, if we look here, we see here's one IF, here's another IF, here's a tube in the middle. Um, this is pretty certain to be an IF amplifier, and a 6BA6 would be nice at, at home in there. This one, closest to the antenna, wires coming out of the front end of the radio. This one is most likely the oscillator and mixer tube. And this one probably, you know, take, take a guess, should be a 6BE6. Let me pull that out. <laughs> Just see if I'm cracked in the head here. Six B A six. So we could just stick a 6BE6 in there and see what happens. I mean, for all I know, the 6BA6 isn't the right tube either. I, I have no idea. And I, I doubt the owner of this may know either. So, why don't we look at the uh, pinout on a 6BE6 compared to what's going on in the back of the circuit here and see if we can line up plates, grid, stuff like that. Yeah, I don't even have to get the tube to do that. I'll take a 6BE6. I'm not sure what else it could be, really. 6BE6. Okay, pentagrid converter. Miniature type used as a converter in superheterodyne circuits in both standard broadcast and FM bands. 6BE6 is similar in performance to the metal type 6SA7. Okay, so. Six B E six. Complete voltage, 300. Couple of grids, 100, 300. Negative bias value. Grid number 3. 50. Negative bias value on grid number 3. Grid number one, oscillator grid, 10 volts. Grid number two, uh, the other grid number one, oscillator grid resistor, 
20,000 ohms. I don't know what all that's about. Uh, 6B6 requires miniature 7 contact socket may be mounted in any position. For heater and cathode considerations refer to 6AV6. I don't know why it says that. Because of the special structural arrangement of the 6BE6, a change in signal grid voltage produces little change in cathode current. Consequently, an RF voltage on the signal grid produces little modulation of the electron current flowing in the cathode circuit. This feature is important because it, it is desirable that the impedance in the cathode circuit should produce little degeneration or regeneration of the signal frequency input and intermediate frequency output. Another important feature is that because signal grid voltage has very little effect on the space charge near the cathode, changes in AVC bias produce little change in oscillator transconductance and in the input capacitance of grid number one. Therefore, there is therefore little detuning of the oscillator by AVC bias. These are fancy little things, aren't they, these tubes? Okay, so we're looking at the pin layout. And we'll compare it to what we see in the radio for this one up here. So pin number one, pin number one, pin number one is the signal grid. Well, that's this guy. Could be. Pin number two is the cathode. Doesn't look right, does it? Because that white wire goes up into the switch here. Hmm. Not quite what I would imagine. You know, this is just off the top of my head here, so I can be wrong about everything. Three and four are heaters. Really? Okay, three is grounded. Four, you know, could be heater, I don't know. Four, usually isn't these tubes. Five would be the plate. So counting one, two, three, four, five, would be the plate. Well, that goes up to a, uh, one of the IF coils. Kind of makes sense. Pin number six and pin seven are the uh, other grids. Pin number six and pin number seven. Could be, I don't know what's going on in there. Well, let's look at a 6SA7. No, wait a minute. 6SA7 has a different kind of base on it. It can't be it can't go in there. Well, who's in favor of trying one? All those in favor of trying one say, okay. Since I'm the only one here, I'll say, okay. Depends if I have one, of course. A 6BE6 looks pretty much like a 6BA6. 6BA, BA, I've got a lot of 6BA6s here. of one. Six B A six. Too many of these. Six B A six again. Six E V five. Six A V six. Six A V six. 
pretty sure I've got one in here somewhere. They're pretty common. Don't know. 6KE8, there's a strange tube. 6CB6A, 6CB5. Uh oh, I'm running out of tubes here. 6. Looks like 6CB6. Six. Oh, that's definitely not it there. 12. What's up? Whoa, whoa, whoa. What, what's a 12 doing in my 6 box? 6B6, 6 6B86. Uh oh. Right down to the bottom of the barrel here. Six. Looks like six AU six. Here's my last one here. Six B A six. Oh, oh, we don't have one. Ah, do I have some more hidden around here? collection is not as extensive as it really needs to be. These are all my 12s here. 12, oh, see, 12 B6. I have a bunch of 12B, 12BE6s. Now, 12BE6, is that one of those tubes that will run on 6 volts because it actually has two filaments? Let's take a look. 12. There's a few. You can run on either 12 or 6. 12BE6. Heater volts 12, unfortunately. Yeah, it's just no. There's no. It's just one heater. 12 volts. This type's identical with miniature 6BE6. Huh. You could put it in there, but it's not going to heat up enough. It make any sense to even try it? it has the same pin pin out. Point one five amps and the six B E six. Six B E six. Somewhere in here it's going to give me the uh, heater current. Heater, there's heater current 0.3. So it's, it's the same uh, wattage. I have a feeling we put in the uh, 12, we're going to get next to nothing out of it. You know what? Why don't we try it? Because I, got, I don't know what else to do for crying. <laughs> I don't know what else to do. What? Give up? My only option? There's a 12BE6 right here. I got a bunch of them, so why worry? If I cook one up, it's not the end of the world. Never tried this before. Wouldn't want to do it the other way.
I'll certainly do this on current limiting. In case we've got something more seriously wrong with our theory here. A little quick safety check. Everything appears to be in order. So keep your eye on this too, in case it does something funny. Here we go. Not, nothing funny. Current draw looks appropriate. I don't think we're seeing anything bad here. Volume is down. Speaker wires look okay. Okay, baby. Show me what a radio sounds like. Here we go. Wow, that's hard to believe. It sounds like a radio. Well, it sounds better. Let's put on the antenna because I took it off. Just touch it and see what happens here. <laughs> and you know what? I got this on current limiting, so the six, the twelve B six. Look at that! <laughs> the twelve B six isn't even getting anywhere near the heat it should be getting. I'm a little excited here. Let's turn down the volume. Let's hook up the antenna. Boy, this is a, quite a lesson here, I'm learning. Well, I, I, I shouldn't jump to conclusions here, should I? Because I'm sure Murphy is watching me carefully as I do this, looking for his chance to step in here. Okay, let's see what we get. Well, it's interesting. It's more interesting than it was. Let's give it the full juice here. Full juice. Well, that's pretty interesting, eh? I'm, uh, my tone control has a problem. The volume's good. Let's see if we can pump a signal into it. Figure out just where this radio is at. So. Right there, that, that should be around 1 megahertz. Okay, we'll pump the signal right into them here. There we go. Oh my gosh. Tune the radio. Eight sixty. Let's get it 
to 640 here if we can do that. Six forty is a local station that's quite strong. What happened to it? Where'd it go? down around 600 here. Six forty be right around there I think. Interesting. Anyway, it seems to be looking now for an alignment to pick up its sensitivity. Can't seem to cut the volume out either. That's wow, this thing's really cooking in terms of volume. Okay, so the question is, uh, how come we're not picking up any radio here? Let's repeat a test we did yesterday. I briefly used my uh, scope to look for the oscillator signal. I'm going to repeat that now and verify that the way I was doing it would have worked had there been an oscillator signal. on my scope ground here. Without even touching, look at what I'm doing here. Okay, I'm bringing my probe near, near rows. If I touch them, I think it stops the oscillator. Now, watch the effect on my oscilloscope while I do this. Just bring it in closer and closer. There's the touching. Oh, you can even see the signal there. It's probably changing its frequency wildly, but just getting it close enough. You can see the oscillator frequency. That's pretty interesting. I've never, uh, never quite seen that before. So, that just verifies that the way I did the test yesterday was valid. Because when I did it, I got no indication that there was an oscillator oscillating, and of course now we know there was no oscillator oscillating. So let me hook up the antenna completely here. I don't have the ground on. Isn't that interesting? 
Well, that's because we're on signal generator. Oh no, we're plugged into the antenna. Isn't that interesting? Why would the radio go dead just because I'm putting an antenna ground wire connection in? One reason would be I've got the ground and antenna terminals mixed up on the back here, and I'm actually grounding the antenna. I'll just turn up the radio a little bit better. There we go. Tune it a bit. There you are. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this very suspicious control, which is at an extreme. Okay, that sounds like an oscillator to me. So it's an oscillator turned way off. Well, I, you know, I don't have the uh, radio cabinet. I don't have the radio cabinet. I can't read the dial. There's no chart on the back, and I have no instructions. So, to me, 640 would be further over, more like this. Let, let, let's see which way this, this tunes. Let's see if the pointer here moves that way that way as I raise this upwards. Here we go. Up. Sure enough. signal strength here. Okay, I've got one, two, three more adjustments. One, two, four capacitors. It's a two-band radio. So, let's just dive into it. No change. No change. No change. Why don't we do the IFs? <laughs> IFs good. Good enough. Okay, we'll try the capacitors here. No change. No change. No change. Oh. Sounds like an oscillator. Maybe not. Yeah. 
So that's adjusting the oscillator, probably the high end, low end of the band type thing. Other one's probably doing the same thing for. Uh, so my guess is one of these coils, one of these capacitors here, is going to affect this band. A little more aggressive. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six. A little higher up in this area. This one. One. Two. Nothing. And try this one. One. Okay. What we'll try now is we'll try the FM band. so excited I haven't gotten this working, you know. <laughs> We're on the shortwave band now. Very, very weak. Okay, let's go through these coils again. This guy. No effect. No noticeable effect. This is probably the oscillator. Yep. can't do anything about adjusting the oscillator on this radio. Couple capacitors. Nothing. We have a new young pastor How about that? that I have become friends with and it's been a real blessing to me. I asked him the other day if he minded if I gave him your tapes on the book of Revelation. Because he said this he one? was going to start the book. Oop. Oop. I am asking for that. It's an oscillator. So you have the two oscillators and the antennas. So what we're going to do now, we're going to do a more proper alignment and we'll use our signal generator. Uh, I don't know what frequency that's on. Could be up near 15 for all I know. Let's go see if we can find it though. Okay, so I'm feeding uh, my signal generator into the back of the radio now.
case I turned it down too low. This is what I suspect that actually is. lead wire is not quite long enough to get over there. Hey, who's fading out? My, uh, the signal strength control on my output, on my generator, the output control is a little noisy. Okay, there we are. Okay, got a nice reading on the meter. Somebody's drifting. I think it's the output of my... It's not very good, is it? Never noticed it to be that bad before. Okay. There we go. Nice and steady. Let's tune it in. Okay. back to this guy here. I don't see any change from this one. Don't like that. I'll try this one now. Yeah, I pretty much had it dead on from my ear hearing and the other two are the oscillators. Now what's with this coil then? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. Five, six, stop counting. Not making much difference up here. I'm at the high end of the band and that could be why. Well, that's pretty interesting. So, 15, we'll take it down to the low end here. It's amazing. I can't believe I'm doing this with a with a 12 volt tube in there. Down at the low end of the band, this is probably around six. We're down to 
10, coming up from 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh-oh, what's happened? Uh-oh. Anybody know what just happened? <laughs> Something's lost its happiness here. Okay, back on to current limiting. Okay, what happened? We were having so much fun. Turn in these controls. Fooey! Fooey on Yui. Not from the meter. Keepers, we were having just a great time on it. Well, I don't know what to think now. Let's shut it off and let it cool off for a bit. Great thing is the radio is working now.